Hello students, welcome to the next session on the discussion of belt drives. So generally for a transmission of power from the machines from one end to the other end, we need some intermediate mechanisms. We call them as belt drives. So here in the pictures, you can see some of the types of mechanisms. Uh, already you are familiar regarding this one because in your school days, I think everybody has a drive on the cycles. And many times, if you observe this mechanism, we will very much, very well understand regarding how this mechanism works. When you are driving your cycle, the pedals are coupled to this larger sprocket. And when the power from your legs are applied on the pedal, it rotates and to this sprocket the chain is being linked so the power from your legs it is transferred to the larger sprocket from this larger sprocket it is transferred towards the chain from this end it moves towards the rear end of the wheel that is the smaller sprocket here to a smaller sprocket there is a rear wheel which makes your cycle to move forward the same mechanism it is used for different machines so generally in the machines whatever the power is being developed that power whichever it is the power is developed is transmitted to different machines by means of some intermediate mechanisms it may be in the form of a chains known as chain drives if you observed in the summers and especially the sugarcane juice centers there how they remove the sugarcane juice with the help of such kind of belt so the power from the electric from the motor it is transferred to the juice crusher with the help of the belt itself we call this as a belt drive then from one end of the shaft to the other end of the shaft it can also be transferred transmitted with the help of uh, the gears also so we call them as gear drives we will discuss in the next uh, module in a module part and uh, regarding this very much you are familiar regard when you are pulling the water from a well or any lifting the object which is very much heavier you can't afford a belt then you are taking the help of a rope so we call them as rope drives so for this first example is regarding the cranes when the cranes are lifting the big, big, big structures whatever the wires and cables are there they are nothing but they are related to the rope drives itself so more or less what you can say that uh, to transmit the power from one end of the shaft to another end of the shaft to transmit the power from one end of the shaft to the other end of the shaft an intermediate mechanism is required which is known as a drive for our syllabus we need to understand the working of belt drives as well as gear drives now what are belt drives so belt drives if you observe the picture carefully here in this picture you can observe that there is one pulley which is uh, getting the energy from the source we call this as driver pulley and it is pulling the belt and it is transforming this belt to the other side of the pulley we call it as a driven pulley so belts belt drives are nothing but the belts which are made up of the leather cotton or fabric materials and they are stronger flexible durable and which are having some coefficient of friction because when the belt meets with the pulley surfaces at this part as well as this part there is some friction occurring so there is some coefficient of friction present in the belts also so generally that is to transport the power from one shaft to the another shaft using the belts and up as I told the leather, cotton or rubber materials. Then if you observe at this arrangement here, there are uh, two shafts. This is the one shaft, this is the second shaft. This is the shaft which is receiving the power from the machine. At the background you can see there is a machine. So whatever the power is there generated in this machine, it is, it is transmitted to this shaft. So this shaft you can call it as the driving shaft and the pulley which is there is called the driver pulley or the driving pulley. 
now this pulley when it is rotating it pulls the belt towards it keep in mind if the driver pulley is pulling the belt towards it if the driver pulley is pulling the belt towards it we call that side of the belt as tight side and the opposite side of the belt as slack side now once the driver pulley pulls the belt the tight side comes here and the slack side as it moves towards the other pulley this pulley we call it as driven pulley it is used for lifting the object as you can see in this picture here it is lifting the object so driver pulley is a pulley which receives the power from the prime mover device and it is transforming transmitting this power to the another pulley which is known as the driven pulley mounted on a driven shaft another important point here is you need not think that always the smaller pulley in size is a driver pulley no it is not the case even the size may the even the size may change also and even the direction of rotation may also change also now if you observe in this sketch see in this sketch if you observe this is the driver pulley it is receiving the power and this is the driven pulley as i told you previously that if the driver pulley is pulling the belt now from where it is pulling the belt it is pulling from the bottom it is pulling from the bottom we call this as the tight side and the opposite side is the slack side so in the previous year also the driver pulley where it was pulling the belt from the top side so therefore the pulling side was on the top we call it as tight side in the next sketch here the pulling is done on the bottom side therefore we call this as the tight side so in very very simple words first identify which is the driver pulley and then the pulling side of the driver pulley the belt pulling side of the driver pulley is the tight side normally there are two types of belt drives one is an open belt drive and there is a cross belt drive let us see what is open belt drive first here here there are two pictures one is the front view of this open belt drive mechanism and then is the top view in the front view if you observe carefully there are two shafts a and b which are at some separate distance they are they are separated by some distance the pulley a it is rotating in clockwise direction similarly pulley b it is also rotating in clockwise direction in the sketch already they have written that pulley a is driver pulley which means the pulling side of the belt that is from rq it is the tight side and the opposite side lm is the slack side so the next is a driven pulley so in a open belt drive if both the driver and driven pulley rotate in the same direction rotate in the same direction then uh, we call it as an open belt drive case so as you can see here in the picture bottom if they are rotating in the same directions then we call them as open belt drive case if the driver pulley and the driven pulley rotate in opposite direction now you can see here in this sketch this is in the clockwise direction whereas the driven pulley is in the anti clockwise direction so if they are rotating in the opposite directions then we call them as cross belt drive case now when the driver pulley is rotating in the clockwise direction which is the pulling side at the bottom that is from q to r this is the tight side whereas what is l to m it is the slack side so you can see some part of the belt that is at some point it may meet here which you can see clearly in the top view some point both slack side and right side are in interaction with one another so in very simple words if both the pulleys up rotate in the opposite directions then we call it as a cross belt drive case which you can see here at the bottom 
then the very very important thing is how to calculate the length for a belt drive systems so now we are studying here regarding the calculation of length for an open belt drive case so already i have told you what is an open belt drive case if uh, both if both the driver pulley and the driven pulley are rotating in the same direction then we call it as open belt drive system if you observe this picture carefully you can see that there is a pulley mounted in a shaft o1 whose radius is r1 it is a larger pulley there is another pulley which is mounted on a shaft o2 whose radius is r2 it is a smaller pulley both are rotating in clockwise directions and these two pulleys they are kept at some distance apart what is the distance x x now if i start from point h to calculate the length from h from h to g g to this point of contact of the belt with the pulley rim pulley surface that is up till e again from e to f and again the point of contact of the belt with the pulley from f to h this much this much i have to trace entirely to know how much length of the belt is required for this kind of system open belt drive system so l we need to find out that is the total length of the belt we divide this into three subsections the first subsection is between the point of contact on a larger pulley so if you observe from point g to point e the belt is in contact with the larger pulley so this length we call it as l1 length of belt in contact with the larger pulley so if you observe carefully in the picture we need to know what is the total length here so angle l1 has to be estimated here similarly the second section is angle of contact or you can say the belt in contact with the pulley for a small for with the surface of a smaller pulley that is from f to h that is l to length of belt in contact with smaller pulley and remaining is without contact that is l3 it is gh as well as ef so when you are calculating l3 if you find any one value that is the length of gh or ef then if you double it will get the both sides because both sides we are having the same length so if you find the value of ef double it you get the value of even gh also now the equation is to calculate the total length l you to find these three terms l1 plus l2 plus l3 so if you observe as i told you we are dividing into three sections first one is l1 that is the contact with the larger pulley with the belt so it it starts to contact from this point g up till point e so this line o1 to e it makes a small angle alpha this is the same small angle alpha even on the other side that is from o1 to g also this is the same angle alpha here also so length l1 is equal to this totally it is 180 degrees it is pi plus this alpha this alpha it is pi plus 2 alpha into your radius how much r1 so l1 is pi plus 2 alpha into r1 similarly for the smaller pulley point of contact from f to h total is 180 degrees even this is also the angle subtend is same the alpha value also the same alpha value here also so how much alpha value is in contact here the same alpha is also in contact on the other side also so the total angle subtend is how much now from this end to the other end it is 180 degree 
we need to find out only this angle that is from F to H. So how you can write 180 degree minus of this angle and this angle will get the total angle F from F to H that is L2 is equal to pi minus of 1 alpha 2 alpha that is pi minus 2 alpha into radius R2. This is regarding L1 and L2. Now we need to find out for L3. For L3, from point O2, draw a line, draw a line parallel to the line EF such that it meets the line O1E at point M. Or you can say that O2M is line drawn parallel to EF. Now, if you observe the triangle O1, O2, M, it is a right angle triangle. And even uh, from uh, M, O2, O1, it is also having the same alpha angle subtended. So, the alpha angles here, 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 and these here all are same itself. So, what you can say that angle O1, O2M is the alpha angle, which is the same as from O1 to E itself. Now, this is a right angle triangle O1, O2M. We need to calculate the length of O2M because if you get the value of O2M, automatically it is the value of EF itself from this picture. So, O2M, how we can write according to our hypotenuse rule? Square root of O1 O2 square minus of O1 M square. Then what is O1 and O2? O1 and O2, it is a distance between the two shafts that is x. That we are writing it as x square. Then what is O1 M? How I can write? O1 M is nothing but if you observe the figure carefully, O1 to E. This is, if you want to get the value of O1M, from O1E, if I minus ME, from O1E, if I minus ME, I get the value of O1M. So O1M, how you can write? O1M is equal to O1E minus EM. What is O1E? It is radius R1. And what is ME? If I move corresponding to the other side, what is ME? It is O2F. It is O2F. Which means it is radius R2. So, O1M, how I can write O1E minus EM? That is R1 minus R2 whole square. Now, next part. To the equation of O2M, what we are doing is we are multiplying the both numerator and denominator by x square. So, when you multiply both denominator and x by x square, the resulting equation is in this pattern. Now, from this, I can write the same equation as 1 minus R minus R2 whole square by X square or O2M is equal to, I take this X outside, coming outside the square bracket, it becomes only X, then totally what do I get? 1 minus R minus R2 o by X whole square to the power of 1 by Now, if you expand the terms which are present in this bracket, in the square root of the bracket, by which theorem? Your binomial theorem, which you have learned in your PUC. So, according to your binomial theorem, when you expand the brackets, the terms present in the brackets, you neglect their powers, higher powers, and the resulting equation we are writing in this pattern that is 1 minus 1 by 2 R minus R2 by X whole square. 
sorry equation number 5 it is reduced to this pattern x 1 minus 1 by 2 r minus r 2 by x whole square so now you got the value of o 2 m but what is this o 2 m it is parallel to the length of f which means you have got the value of f itself so line o 2 m is parallel to the length of f which means you have got the value of f so similarly, if I draw another one line from point O2 to the line parallel line GH, you and I will get the same value itself. So instead of that, directly whatever the value of EF I have got, I write the same for GH itself just by doubling it. So what I write is total length delta is the thing, but it is twice of O to M. This is the part. So what do I get? This to this whole equation, I multiply by two. That is two of X one minus one by two r minus r2 by x whole square now the simplification part once i get all the cases that is l1 l2 and l3 i substitute them in equation number one so where you can see pi plus 2 alpha r1 plus pi minus 2 alpha r2 plus 2x1 minus 1 by 2 r1 minus r2 by x whole square where if you open up the brackets what do you get that is pi r1 plus 2 alpha r1 then we get it as pi r2 minus 2 alpha r2. So on simplification and taking the common things here, pi r1, pi r2, pi is common, it becomes r1 plus r2. Similar to alpha r1, 2 alpha r2, 2 alpha r2 is common, it becomes r1 minus r2. If I multiply and say, what do I get? 2x minus 1 by x r1 minus r2 whole square, I get this one. Now everything is there, but just I need to substitute the value of alpha. For again, this I go to the angle, triangle the same itself, O1, O2, M. Here, what is sine alpha? In this right angle triangle, it is opposite side, O1, M. We have a hypothesis, O1, O2. So, what is the value of O1, M? I have told you previously itself, O1, M is nothing but, it is O1, E minus of E, M. O1, E is, radius r1 em parallel to o2 f that is r2 so what do i get r1 minus r2 by x but this alpha generally it is very very less so sine alpha is equal to alpha itself directly therefore if i make the first substitutions in the equations what do i get l is equal to pi of r1 plus r2 so on simplifications if you observe carefully this part 2 into equals to of r minus r2 whole square by x plus 2x minus. So one term gets cancelled. Final equation is pi of r1 plus r2 plus r minus r2 whole square by x plus 2x. This is the equation for calculating the length of the belt for an open drive case, open belt drive case. Thank you.